The Week in Space. CBS News selective color coverage of the mission of Gemini 9 and Project Surveyor. Now the launching of astronauts Cernan and Stafford for the start of their three days in space. Reporting again from Cape Kennedy, CBS News correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning, and it's uh, windy, quite gusty, and cloud covered here at Cape Kennedy. And there's quite a storm area building up to the north of here. But we're assured by the weatherman that things are going to be all right for the launch of the Gemini spacecraft with astronaut Stafford and Cernan some 38 minutes from now. Their target vehicle is in a perfect orbit circling the Earth. It's now midway over Australia. We'll be back over the Cape here in 38 minutes, and Stafford and Cernan will go aloft to chase it. We're expecting an announcement just about now from Jack King, the voice of Mission Control here at the Cape. This is Gemini Launch Control coming up on T minus 34 minutes and count counting. Our countdown at Launch Complex 19 still going very smoothly at this point. In process are a series of telemetry checks with both the Gemini launch vehicle and spacecraft. The pilots, Tom Staffan and Gene Cernan, are participating in these tests. They've also just completed a series of ultra-high frequency communications checks with Bill Aldrin in the blockhouse. As our countdown proceeds down, we will have a built-in hold at the three-minute mark in the count. This hold will last a uh, little more than three minutes. It may be between three minutes and three minutes and 30 seconds. The flight director will advise the Cape at the 18-minute mark in the count the exact time that he wants us to launch. The launch vehicle test conductor for Germany will come back about 10 minutes later and announce the exact hold time. 
We will have a definite built-in hold at the three-minute mark in the count if all proceeds as well as it is going at this time. We'll now switch to the Mission Control Center at Houston. And this is Jiminy Control at Houston. Our target vehicle is now passing over the continent of Australia. Carnarvon gave us a go for the Gemini launch. All systems aboard the target are in go condition, with the exception, of course, that we cannot confirm whether the shroud has separated. Carnarvon reported they have a good track. Insertion velocity was 25,368.6 feet per second, and the planned feet per second at uh, insertion was 25,368.3 feet per second, so it was almost right on the money, only three-tenths of a second off in speed. Now, we would like to discuss just a little bit, again, the problem we have indicated with the RCS system aboard the target. We did report that ring B pressure is reading low, and we do have a low reading on that. During the launch phase, when the target separated from the Atlas launch vehicle, it was noticed that there was a lot of thruster activity. Ring B thrusters were being used to stabilize the target as it separated from the Atlas. And so we did use some of the fuel. It is reading low. Ring A is reading very well, and we have plenty of fuel aboard in Ring A to complete the rendezvous portion of the mission. Now, should the shroud still be in place, we would not attempt to dock Gemini 9 with the target. However, the crew will be able to determine visually whether that shroud is still in place after they get in the proximity of the target vehicle. This is Gemini Control. We are T minus 30 minutes and 46 seconds. A little explanation of those uh, two problems. Uh, first, an explanation of the countdown discrepancy. The clock that you see occasionally supered on your screen here is a countdown uh, to uh, the launch uh, time of the Gemini less three minutes. There is a built-in hold of three minutes. So if the clock shows 30 minutes, for instance, it's actually 33 minutes uh, to the expected launch time. That hold is built in to uh, make a final adjustment uh, in the uh, launch time uh, to match that of the target vehicle coming overhead uh, as it is tracked across the United States. Those two other problems that are being mentioned. One, the shroud. Well, the shroud is a thin metal uh, covering around the target uh, that protects it uh, during the ascent through the atmosphere until the uh, vehicle reaches space, the altitude at which it uh, separates from the booster and goes into orbit. Uh, that shroud uh, is jettisoned immediately after the booster drops away itself. There has been no indication on the board at Houston on the automatic telemetry, the automatic signals back from the target vehicle that the shroud has jettisoned. If the shroud is not jettisoned, it would mean that the spacecraft cannot dock with that target vehicle as expected. It could still rendezvous with it, but not dock with it, since the shroud covers the docking collar into which the Gemini uh, must fit for a complete docking maneuver. Also, if the shroud is still around uh, the, uh, the vehicle, uh, there probably would not be any attempt at a spacewalk toward the target vehicle, in as much as those uh, squibs, those pyrotechnic, the uh, effect dynamite caps inside the shroud that blow the shroud away from the target would be armed and uh, any electrical static discharge from the Gemini could perhaps set them off, endangering the astronauts. They wouldn't come, in other words, too close uh, to that target vehicle. However, there are good other indications that the shroud has jettisoned. For instance, the target uh, cooled down very rapidly at just the right time uh, that would indicate the shroud had dropped away and that the minus 450 degrees temperature of space was hitting the target.